Another threat that you need to look at, another risk that you need to look at is water. So again, external, internal. Um, internal, we're talking about pipes. We're talking about water that you need to, to run the building, uh, to run the facilities, to, you know, just that is running throughout your building. So ideally, if you, if you're lucky and you're talking about, um, a building that is newly constructed or has been newly constructed, you can influence where the pipes go. So you can make sure that in the areas where there is cultural heritage that needs to be protected, uh, stored, displayed, um, worked on, whatever, there is no water anywhere in the walls, in the ceilings. So that if there is a pipe burst, it's not going to affect those areas. You're not always that lucky. Um, sometimes you are, uh, well, other lucky so that you work in a historical building uh, where there are pipes um, and water conducting um, area pipes that, well, that you can't change, that are just there. So you need to understand, okay, again, how uh, do I identify where is a potential threat and how can I detect it? So you have in this area uh, means, electronic means that can help you, water detectors uh, that you can install in those um, areas where close to the floor so that you know if something actually happens that, uh, yeah, the room doesn't fill up with water, but um, that there is an alarm, someone can react and someone can take care of um, whatever happened um, and, and, well, turn off the water obviously as a first step. <clears throat> and then um, move on with um, with protecting the art pieces, uh, with protecting the cultural heritage. It's the same with in fire. Identify, find out, or make sure that you know how this would affect what you want to protect in the certain areas, and then how well map out how you want to react. It is again, part of the uh, disaster plan, of the emergency plan. Um, when you look at it, where is the art? Where are pieces that you cannot move? Are these people that you can, uh, pieces that you cannot move even affected by water? They might be by fire, but not necessarily by water due to their uh, material, like bronze, for example. So what do you have to move? What is very sensitive to water, like um, obviously paintings, works on paper, anything that is a material that doesn't react well with water. And then who do you call? Who do you need to bring in? Um, in this case also really like who are your conservators that you need to contact? Because if you, for example, are in charge of um, um, yeah, an archive of photography, um, photographs can be actually treated when they have a water damage, but you need to react fast. You need to be really aware of how do, what are the first steps that I really, really need to do really fast to be able to salvage, to save as much as I can. So again, what are the sources? Where is the, uh, where's the crucial um, artwork that I need to protect? What, how would it be affected? How can I detect any leaks, any threat? as soon as I can, as soon as possible, so that I can react adequately. And then who do I need to contact to? Uh, who do I need to talk to, to map that out and to react in case of uh, yeah something like this? This is for eternal, just as true as for external. Here, of course, we are talking about uh, flooding, mostly. We are talking about, so look at the area where you are situated. Do you have a river that is close? Do you have, are you close to the sea maybe? Um, is there even smaller rivers that, you know, in case of strong rains can become, uh, yeah, quite, quite dangerous, uh, quite uh, threatening to, um, yeah, to your building, to your institution. So be aware of, can, of what can happen. Um, talk to your insurers. They are uh, pretty good in, detect, in detecting, uh, yeah, the areas that are threatened by um, by high water, by flooding on a regular basis. There are certain tools that you can use. So get the the advice that you need to be able to again identify where um, where that comes in. 
when you are in areas, for example, where there are hurricanes, where there is storm surge. So, you know, water coming at you really quickly, storms that can cause a lot of problems. And then react to it if you can, even before <laughs> before you, you, you actually are in uh, are, are working or, or you know have your whole um, establishment running up by for example putting the art on a higher floor um, having uh, your your storage not in the basement not on a lower level but have it higher up so again look at how can this affect you strong rains torrential rainfalls which are becoming more and more um, common unfortunately they can, because you have a lot of water coming at you really, really fast in a very, very short uh, period of time, um, the canalization cannot take it. So you have flooding, even if you're in the city, especially if you're in the city, because it can trickle away. So um, what can happen? Can this affect your basements? How, you know, how far up would this affect you? If there's a hurricane and you're situated somewhere at the coast in a city, even if in the outskirts, so the water that is being pressed in from the sea, for example, how high would it go? And then some, obviously, because you want to be on the safe side. If you are in a historical building um, alongside a river, for example, where you know this thing floods all the time or on a regular basis, do have a plan in um, yeah in, in service in action that where you know exactly if this warning level is reached, this is what we do. Again, part of the emergency of the disaster plan to to know if this happens, this is how I react because again I have identified where the artwork is, what do I want to protect, um, where do I move it, if I can move it, if I cannot move something, how would it be affected? Uh, so identify, warn, react, very, very important. Talk to the experts, find out how you can employ your warning systems um, as efficiently as you can to be able to get that warming, warning really, really fast so that you can react adequately.